before we can get started we have to set up the scene as you see i have a already a scene set up here and i'm using the asset for the can assets i give the link in the description and the next thing you need to set up is your burdens so in my case i have a playable canvas which has such to scale with screen size yes of course i want to just uh, scale with the screen size and inside that i have a uh, moment ui i just in the game object that's going to hold my all the buttons and then inside i have a uh, four buttons up right down and left in these all buttons are just the image have the image components for now now when you have set up this buttons in your scene then we need to install the ready in input system which can install by going to windows access manager and if we go to unity g3 we can need to search for the input system this is input and you got this you can need to click on the install button it's going to take a uh, little bit of time so let's get it now the next step is to set enable the new input access system when you install the package it will ask you to should i enable it or not then you if you click on yes it will start in it but in your case if it's that does not happen if you still want to check the whether my new input system is active or not so you can always go to edit to the settings and if you go to player scroll down and you can always see the active input handling so you can set it to the input system package new so if you set to this and unity asks you, you to restart the computer or uh, restart the unity and then you are ready to go first need to set up the about x and map so where we can the bindings of this so for bindings we go to the player in the player we need to uh going to add a component called player sorry not player input so we need to add a player inputs okay so this thing the inputs so is asked for the accent map so we need to create a create accent we can create an accent anywhere you want let's create the accent in my script folder because i don't like to be organized so you can name it anything new but here's the one simple thing you can do is if you name this accent map as a player and click on save so if you see it will going to generate a few pre-made inputs type for you this way come very handy when you just want to create a quickly so but if something like that doesn't happen in your case it's just create an inputs uh if you say just create a empty accent map then you can just follow now me, follow me so i just lead the, all the accents and we're going to click on plus i can we're going to create a new one let's name it wolf and set this accent type to the value and set the control type to vector 2 since we uh the action we are going to get the input in four directions so vector 2 now on the slide the no binding thing and just click on this plus icon and you can see that this uh click on this plus icon you can see it here this click on is add the uh, add up down left right compositing so this is going to be add a new binding and so here you can specify up down left right okay so we need to give up binding as a w and down binding as a s you can choose any key if you want but i go with the keyboard conventions for the pc games that we have wsd so a for keyboard and right for d now if you if you look closely these are binding for the pc games not for the mobiles so how can we just uh tell unity that <laughs> this is a mobile input okay right? So in order to do so, what we're going to do, we have to get something like a bridge. You can, if you say that till this this W and the button we click, uh, click here is the same. Like this is just a on screen button for my W. If I tell the unit like something like that, so my I might get the job done because all I need to do is get this W input, right? So what we're going to do here, you need to provide this a safe, simple, handy way to do this is if I go to my up. Uh, Go to add component and search for on screen button. On screen button. So this is going to be bake this icon as a on screen button. And if I pass the control pad W, it's going to be do this do the same work as a W I'm going to do here. Okay, and it's like a uh, keyboard virtual keyboard. Okay, so virtual keyboard. So if I W keys bo, uh, if I if I press W on my keyboard, it goes up. So when I press this button, it's also going to go up because we're performing as a W. So make sure you uh, control that and the actually match this uh, matched up. So just to be set up 
सेम थिंग फॉर द लेफ्ट राइट डाउन सो दस गिव एड ऑन स्क्रीन बटन गिव द राइट फॉर डी डाउन फॉर एस लेफ्ट फॉर ए ओके गुड so you have set up the our inputs now so it is going to work on the mobile devices don't so is so we done with the moment ui and all the input canvas next thing we need to know how we can read those inputs you need to provide plenty of the way to read those inputs so the way i going to prefer is using a c sharp generated class so because they they are actually very easy to uh do so what we going to do here we going to uh script and the 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 goal view and the we have created the player action map if you click on the player action map if you see it has a generate c sharp class so if i click on this c sharp class it's going to be asking for some properties before we can create it so let's first we going to give it and here we want to create it so let's also the with a file name okay so we give the player action map let's give it the action map and save it and then we going to give us our uh, class name so the class name is script name matches so layer action map okay next thing we ask you for name space you have a name space in the project setup so you can give always that and then click on apply if you click apply is the new script have it generated this take a take little time to compile it but if i click it's generated a new c sharp it has like move value value and a type the blah blah stuff Okay, start by creating the two scripts. We need two scripts: input manager and the player movements. Input manager going to be handle all the inputs. Uh, you may see like reading the inputs and player movement will be going to move the player. So basically, I'm going to try to separate the inputs and the movement part in two different scripts. It's come very handy when you're working on the bigger games and we have a lots of the inputs. You will know later when I will adding some more things. So it's a good idea to just separate your inputs from your actual Our behaviors so it could work. So when you get two scripts, just open up in the Visual Studio. You can double click it and open up in Visual Studio, and you can get this. And that's just, in that we need to first delete those two things. We don't need the uh, default matter for now. Next thing we need to access that generated script in our code somehow. Now since this generated script is um, you will see like a uh, partial class and technically does not have a mono behavior in it. so we cannot directly access like a get component log like something we need to create an instance of that and then we going to give the name of uh, uh give the name of the class of the that generated class of so player action map and the name of player action map. now next thing we need to create the instance of the class so we going to use a void awake method to initialize that string so we got void awake and we say player action map is equal to new action map that's it so that's how that's you need to do it Now we have created a new instance. Now we need to enable the input. So he started reading this. So clear action map. Thought, okay, so we don't do do this here. Uh, as as I told you that you should uh, make your inputs in different scripts. Uh, this is the reason why I'm telling you. So we call a wide enable on enable, and this here we type clear action dot to enable. what this going to do this is going to be enables the player actions okay the move inputs enable and start reading it and we also need to have a private void on disable so player action have to be disable that's the this stuff now we have done with this all the stuffs now it's time to actually start it reading those inputs so we need to have a creating a private bracket 2 since the movement going to be in a vector direction we also need to take the inputs in vector Like in the old input system, we have a uh, get axis horizontal and get axis vertically. These are uh, returning as the value of the one and minus one zero, depending on the what key we're pressing, and we convert this into the vector so we can easily plug into the moment direction. So this simply we're going to create the uh, private to vector, and let's say name it move input, move input. And now since this field is a private, we need to create a getter for this so we can access out of the outside of the script script, and actually. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a public private to and we're going to create new name it move input with the M capital this time move input and unity solid itself and we go this symbol and move inputs. So what this is going to do is going to create a getter for this move input. Okay. 
So this way, in our move inputs now become the value read read only from outside the strip. I can only next thing we need to start reading this input. So wide update, you can wide update and you can also go fix update or invoke if you're reading depending on what you. But we're going to read this uh, uh read the input for every frame. So I will call the move input is equal to we're going to use a player action map and then we're going to access the player dot then inside that function we need to find the move we see the move property yes we need to get this and dot we can need to uh you can say read value we need to get past the read value and we as the value type we're going to pass the vector to since the our actual value is the vector to and boom it's there now this is how you can read the value that's simple it is now next thing we need to take this input and plug it actually in our movement code so we go to our player movement strip here we have nothing in it so let's quickly remove those functions and just quickly add um and since we also need to access that input manager so just so private input manager input manager so we able to access the RPG property and the input major. This is in keep. We can also mark it as public, but I'm for my case I'm just marking it private. And since this input major and player movement going to be on the same game object, so I can go and get this by actually by the get components. So like this. Okay, and we need to need a uh, float. So I speed and private float speed just save speed. Uh, next thing you also need to get a proper spin C P also oh sorry this thing going to be a private okay so we get the speed variables uh, in the move directions now let's go to the wide update and start getting that value wide update and this time we're going to type uh, move direction is equal to the input major dot move input so if we get this you see if we get this move input the move input that we here directly get this from uh and plug it in the move direction so this is going to return the move direction so you can also try to uh normalize it you mean but i don't think that you don't need it so okay i'll just normalize it now we can start actually moving the players so we're going to use the white fixed update for this we're going to use the art dot move position which is going to work well and pass the current position and the move direction so is going to returning the sum of those vector vectors and multiply by the speed and we can't forget our time dot six delta time is very important okay that's simply how you can going to move the okay, case and i think this thing going to be works so let's go to this back to the unity and player we're going to attach those both skills about the input major we got the input manager. Next thing we're going to attach the player movement. And let's adjust the speed by pipes. Ah. So that's how you can set up your own mobile inputs using buttons in Unity. So that's very easy, you know. So that's it for this video. And I hope you like this video. So this is all how you can set up the uh, inputs by the buttons, you can say. So that's it thanks for watching i will meet you in the next video bye have a great day